Okay. Well, just, I'll just cut everything out that we don't eat. Okay, so basically, for those of you who don't know, Cody and I write for NAG, which is the best magazine in the world, but I mean, you already know that because you're here watching our show. And we've decided that in typed words alone, you just don't have enough of us every week. There is a hole in your heart that only an Ariel and a Cody will fill. It's just facts. So this is what this will be. It's a weekly show of us choosing a topic that has been heavy on our minds and just talking nonsense about it. People that just randomly drop you messages. So we got a message like this in our work group today. Like, send a photo of your office. I'm popping by to see your house. Can we please do away with that? I don't know what clean homes people are used to, but it's not mine. It's not a real home. It's a <laughs> Sims home. It's a Sims home. My home Even is my never Sims clean. Even my Sims home is never clean constantly. Like, it's unrealistic. It's a mirror image of underneath your current table. It's actually not that bad. I'll be honest. My vacuum ran. <laughs> your vacuum ran under the table. That's good. For those yep. of us who don't have automatic vacuums. I don't us... know what to tell you. Good luck. <laughs> send us how clean <laughs> your table is. Let's see. <laughs> Let's have a look. Maybe it's cleaner. If it's cleaner than Ariel's automatic vacuumed pristine cable tied underneath table, you know. Can tied okay i need to show you what it looks like under my table there is not a cable tie to be seen it is honestly a cable manager's worst nightmare under here i don't know i mean i've got a whole cable tray under mine and you just put everything inside oh i have Manic. that too there's nothing inside of it <laughs> okay so you guys but have I a suppose good chance. i also have like shelves in my cupboard and yet nothing is folded in there either so you just throw it in and close the door. That's how it goes. Yep. Speaking of throwing it in, throw us That's a... That's what she said. <laughs> throw us one of those <laughs> sneaky voice notes that uh, you got okay, over Okay, so that's another thing we're going to be doing. If you guys are watching this and you love us and you're like, wow, I need help with a problem. And Where's the only you? people who are knowledgeable enough is Ariel and Cody. Ariel and Cody. Then, yep, you can drop us a voice note. And it can be anything. It could be a topic suggestion. It could be a question. It could be advice for us. I don't know anything. New theme and song. Drop it for us. What's our WhatsApp number? Do you know it by heart? It is on screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, drop us a voice note or a message and we'll get around to answering. Okay, you ready? Let's, Let's go. go. So, a question for Ariel and Cody. My friend group finally managed to all get new computers. Now the problem is, instead of playing League all the time, what else is there for us to play? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's League of Legends or nothing. League of Legends or nothing. At least League yep. of Legends has different modes. Like, I don't understand why you need to play something else. If you want to play a fun game, ARAM. If you want to play a sweaty game, ARAM. If you want to play a ranked game, Clash. Clash. Like. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? So we've got a thing. Also, if you're watching this, tune in every single Thursday. The NAG crew plays games together. Cody's been streaming it on his YouTube. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm, pretty mm -hmm. great. Like, there's lots of smaller games. We've been playing V Rising recently. Yeah, V Rising is very cool. And the nice thing of that is you don't need your whole friend group to upgrade their PCs. It's yeah. one of those games that anybody can play and anybody can have a great time with. What's it's your really suggestion? Fun. Ooh. I mean, I didn't think I would enjoy Dead by Daylight as much as I do <laughs> because, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm scared of everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's creepy. <laughs> Um, but it's a lot of fun when you have like, you know, a nice crew to play with. So I can yeah. recommend that. I do recommend that. I go for that one. So there you go. That is our advice for the week. 
you your whole crew has spent all of your money sold some organs sold some blood on the black market to buy new pcs play v rising which you can probably play on a pc from the 90s <laughs> or play dead by daylight but first <laughs> league of legends first then uh, first oh, a couple sure. games that yeah yeah definitely now that we are talking about playing games with your friends i think it's as great a time as any to talk about our main topic which is basically the state of the video game industry currently so it's a two-pronger in my opinion mm -hmm, mm -hmm, one mm -hmm. is the people online who are always like you know children back in my day video games and it's mm -hmm. always like video games went broken. They didn't need patches. They yeah. didn't need updates. They were just great. Mind you, there were so many arcade games. They just stood there because people couldn't progress because mm -hmm. they weren't patches, updates. But anyway, back in their day, video games were better. And then the more current topic of conversation, the state of the industry with games launching in appalling states and then developers going online to be like, oh, shucks, our bad. Here's what an is the letter. culprit here? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, let's go back to, you know, the 1800s when games launched perfectly <laughs> the first time. I mean, like you said, there's games, there were games sitting around there that no one played because there was a bug yep. or something. But back then, you know, people worked around it. They were like, <laughs> they used the bugs to play the game. There was always like, oh my gosh, if you want infinite ammo, crouch over over this turtle and like do a 360 <laughs> infinite ammo. It was a feature. It you wasn't a You can't get past level 26 unless you kick the machine slightly on the left, wobble it 13 times and 13 die. times. Yeah. And, but it worked, right? But that's, I mean, <laughs> yep. so we, maybe people were just more resilient to bugs but bugs have always been around i mean people have been putting out games with bugs since day one so yeah you know i think um i think people just kind of maybe they force companies and maybe this will get us onto the second half of the thing but they force companies into pushing the games out because they just want so much i don't know how people finish games so quickly <laughs> It takes me two weeks just to get past one level, but people need so many games. I'm going to say, I agree with that, right? So, I mean, we are basically making our living, living by playing games. Mm -hmm. Yes, we write about them, but the core part of a job is playing games. Because unless yeah. you play games, you have nothing to write about, create content exactly. about, whatever. And it's a struggle, hey? I just, I don't understand it. There are only so many hours. Yeah. At How some do you... stage, I also need circulation. I must stand. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't get it. those butt cheeks just don't, they're like, they need some fresh They're going to be permanently flat. Yeah. That's like terrible. a board. Flat board butt cheeks. We don't need that. So we need time in our lives to walk around, to step away from some games. So we don't need 15 games released every day. We can give yeah. studios time to make a game but, good. But on the same token though, right? They are making games. They're not curing cancer. <laughs> and I feel like, so put it this way, right? Let's say Apple comes out and says on the 12th of June, they're launching a new iPhone. Okay. They make that commitment. Their commitment is the 12th of June, a new iPhone is launching. Okay. That iPhone launches on the 12th of June. People yes. can't open up messages. They can only accept phone calls for, from every third contact that's pre-saved into their phone. And the camera crashes and forces them to reset their phone. People will burn Apple to the ground, right? It would be a worldwide outcry. Yeah. And yet, video game companies are doing it all the time. Then, falling back on an apology and being like, but we're overworked. And then everybody is like, oh, hi, Shane. You're not curing cancer. You're making a video game. Like, 
it's up to you to set more realistic deadlines like i'm sorry there are really important jobs in this world the person who builds a bridge because you can't have that bridge collapsing and everybody dying the person who performs heart surgery or brain surgery but it's a video game it's not that serious like yeah, just set more realistic goals <laughs> Yeah, so it's a it's a video game, right? So if they say, you know, they, they can give more time. They don't need to be like, oh, we have to release this yes. game in one month. They can release it in a year. They just need to quiet down all the people that are hounding them for games in a month. Just just like make them play something else for one second. I swear okay, they will come back Okay, but people are also hounding companies like Apple for new iPhones. And yet they launch in stable condition. This isn't a problem that's unique <laughs> to video games. No, but I mean, video games are releasing like every two months. Apple's like, we're yeah. going to release a new phone every two years. So but they you have see, but years. that isn't the consumer's problem. That is set realistic deadlines as a developer and as a production company. Stop being so greedy. The production company? Or oh, well, whoever consumer? like... <laughs> Who's no, the greedy I on feel here? like... The greedy one is for studios, right? Mm. So let's just use any studio as an example. Let's just say Blizzard. Okay. Blizzard has a choice. They can either bring out a new Diablo game every 10 years and make sure that it's a great game mm -hmm. that they know everybody's going to buy, everybody's going to love, mm -hmm. or they can ship out a new Diablo game every single year, have it be a disaster, have their little, we're so sorry, we're overworked, we're overwhelmed, but we'll fix it. Like, the choice is theirs at the end of the day. Fans can stand on their head and cry unless a studio says, this is when we're going to release the game. Fans have no say about that. I mean, I think they push the studios into developing earlier than they need to. I mean, maybe not Blizzard, because, I mean, how long... It's been a while since Diablo 3 came out. So, but, I mean, how good is 4, right? Everyone's yeah, raving about 4. So, you see, if they just... If the other studios can just hold Stop on... Stop being greedy! Well, yeah, okay. Maybe So, it's not the developers. It's the guys who are sitting there with all the accounting books that have been like, we need to make 1 million bucks this year. You guys have to release this game right now. Yeah, for or sure. 100% agree. Closing. So... Yeah, don't blame the developers, that's all I'm saying. Blame the money people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I 100% agree, but you know what? At the same token, though, it's like a more systematic issue. Because while I don't think all the blame falls on the developers, because it doesn't, yep. developers still have to take pride in their work. Yeah. So if you take an author, let's take Stephen King. Stephen King pushes out, on average, 10 books a year. Okay. That is what this man averages. And they're not launching full of spelling mistakes and with missing chapters. That's all I'm saying. He is the most sold author in the world. He also has people constantly hounding him for more books. He's the richest author in the world. So he also has book publishers hounding him. When is the next one coming? When is the next one coming? He has movie deals. He has all the same pressure. And yet he's just like, no, it's my name. It's my book. I'm only launching it when I'm done with it. Yeah. I mean, so he's got the right idea. So the rest of the I studios... mean, you're not buying a new BMW without a back door. <laughs> I'm not buying a new BMW. <laughs> <laughs> ever but yes but you could so, if you stopped buying video games for a thousand rand a video game no we're not going to bring that up that we'll just pretend <laughs> <laughs> pretend that never happened i'll walk to the game store to buy a thousand rand video game because i will say like that's another thing back in the day yes there's nostalgia bias everybody looks back at the past and thinks it was so much better than what it was always but back in the day Buying a game didn't cost half of your salary. And I think that's also where people get really angry. Like, yeah. games okay. have just inflated so much in price now. I mean, I remember as a child, I got pocket money 
but I could realistically go and buy myself whichever game the friend group was playing with my pocket money. Yep, yep. And I mean, I didn't come from a super rich family. I wasn't getting like a salary as pocket money. (laughs) And yet I could still afford to play games. I mean, now I'm a working person. And every time a game comes out, it's like a struggle. Like, can I actually afford to buy this game? You got to wait for the sales. But I mean, I suppose I can see what you're saying. Like, I would not spend a thousand five hundred rand on a game and this game, like I'm stuck because of some stupid thing. And now I have to wait two weeks or maybe I can't play on the pre-release because of some (laughs) error. We won't for the whole weekend. (laughs) Which game? But you see, that's also a thing. So, that's a great example. You Mm -hmm. could only get access to early access if you had pre-purchased one of the premium versions of a game. Mm -hmm. It was not available for standard. And I mean, base edition started at 1,600 Rand. The premium versions were 2,000 Rand plus. Yep. The biggest perk of the premium version was the fact that you got your three days early access. And then there's a bug that doesn't allow you to have a three days early access. Yeah. You have a right to be irate. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely like, I'd be on their case for sure. So, but then whose fault is it? Blizzard's fault? I mean, unnamed studio's fault. <laughs> <laughs> No, you know what? It's it's just, I think something has to give. If you're going to constantly push games out and you're not going to quality check and you're planning on fixing things in patches, updates, whatever, your games have to be affordable. Yeah, for sure. If you're launching your game at a premium price tag, I'm expecting a premium experience. 100%. I don't want to spend 2,500 Rand and not be able to get everything that I paid 2500 rand for yeah you want to spend it and then like i want to play i want to enjoy the whole game 100 percent full you know i mean to no put issues. that in perspective right if you decided to play diablo of ashley or i decided to play of larry that is five grand that we spent not to be able to play it for our three days that we were allowed to yeah that's a lot five of money grand is a substantial amount of money so much money I mean, we could have gone out for dinner every day for those three days. We could have gone away for the weekend instead of playing the other. That is more than minimum wage. Yeah, that's nuts. Think about that. So if you're somebody who works retail, that is your salary, your entire salary, Mm -hmm. which means you have no money for food, petrol, medical, anything like that. It is your entire salary to not get the experience that you were paying for. I mean... Okay, I'd be pretty peeped about that. So, <laughs> yeah. So basically, what we're saying is, be better, all of you. Be better. <laughs> like everybody, be better. It's all your faults. It's everyone's yep. fault, from the developer to the studio to the consumer. Just be a better person. Just be hundred percent. Everyone is wrong. <laughs> I do feel that. I'm going to be honest with you, right? (laughs) That is a thought that goes through my head multiple times a day. What, everyone Everyone is is wrong? wrong. (laughs) Yeah, everybody is wrong. Except the two of us. Everyone else is incorrect. Everything we say here is factual. 100% Do you want to hear another voice note? Want to dispel some more knowledge upon someone? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Playing random two. So my question for Ariel and Cody is... What game do you have the most love-hate relationship with, and why? <laughs> okay, you go. <laughs> Me. Uh, I'm going to go with Apex, just because I can't seem to put that bloody game down. But I get so frustrated with it all the time. I don't understand how I've been playing for so many years, and I just... I'm not, why am I not the best at this game? Why am I not better than everybody else? <laughs> I was just about to bring that up. So my game is League of Legends. And yep. the biggest... So growing up, my mom always had this thing she used to teach me. If you want to be really good at something, I think it's the... 
you see, I didn't learn anything ever in my <laughs> life. But it's like the 500 hour rule or 100 hours yeah, or 50 hours or something like that to become a professional. Now, let me tell you, I have more than <laughs> tripled that number. I think last time I checked, I had like 45,000 hours in league. And wow. yet I suck so much at that game and it is just not possible right i am supposed to be a professional i am supposed to be the best plus let me just say it's not like my friend group plays league and it's like ha 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 we're playing league <laughs> we take it so seriously feelings are hurt people stand up after playing in tears <laughs> like it is an actual stressful ordeal and yet i still suck i hate yep. it i hate it so much and yet i can't stop playing Hundred, that's the thing i like <laughs> i can't stop playing it's because it's like gambling you just get that one game where you absolutely <laughs> smash it you're just like wow like and then nostalgia bias you yeah. forget everything bad in the past you're like oh everything. i love this game now <laughs> All 45,000 hours of suck just forgotten right there because of one hour of a great game. That's exactly how it goes. But I feel that's yep. a good game, isn't it? If there's a game that just keeps pulling you back in, that's a great game, you know? 100% sign of a great yeah, game. It's a great game. So, yeah, that's mine. Apex, <laughs> I hate you, but I love I you. I love how we're trying to, like, convince ourselves. We're like, yes, great game, great game. <laughs> sign of a great game. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. It's love hate. It's love hate. There it is. I'm probably gonna get out from under this table and play some Apex anyway. So. Yeah, I think it's time for League. If I'm being honest. I think I do hear Reach calling us anyway. <laughs> so maybe. Maybe okay, we need to well, go and do some work. Time to go up out of the table. Okay. See you next week. Peace. Bye. From underneath the table. Let me cough and get it out first. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs>